All right, let's take a walk around the ground floor of the newly restored Michigan Central Station. Uh, Ford bought this building in 2017 and has been working ever since to bring this back from a derelict hall of a building uh, that had sat vacant for 36 years uh, and it really deteriorated badly. Uh, but now it's back. It's going to be opening up soon. Uh, we're going to start here with the east entrance. If I can get back in. So coming in off the east entrance, which is where most of the people used to come in through here. Apparently in the, in the heyday of the station, about 4,000 people a day would come through this entrance. And this is the elevator lobby going up to the tower. And the historic arcade where eventually there will be some various types of shops and events, retail spaces, uh, maybe some dining. Well, let's take a walk through here. As you go down this hallway, you come up to the ticket windows, which of course is where people would come in to get their tickets for the trains. The clock up above the ticket windows had to be completely reconstructed uh, from archival images. They had some bits and pieces of it, but most of it was gone. Uh, so they built a new clock based on all the research. There were hundreds of researchers that worked on this building, worked on parts of this building over the course of the last seven years. About 3,100 construction workers, plus several hundred more people doing various other work. These were the ticket windows. And you can see the, the massive columns in here. And one of the one of the challenges with this building, of course, was that you know mo all the windows were gone, much of the roof was gone, and there was a lot of water. There was about three and a half million gallons of water inside this building. It took about 18 months to pump it all out of the building, and with that water coming in over the course of three and a half decades, it caused a fair bit of erosion on some of the things like these these columns. You can see the pits. They left the pits on many of these panels of the columns to show the history of this building and what happened to it over the, the course of the last 36 or four, uh, last four decades or so. And as we continue on through here, we come into the Grand Hall. And this was the main waiting area where passengers would come in and wait, wait for their trains. And like many other classic train stations. This is a massive space. And again, a lot of restoration work that had to happen in here. The, uh, the large ceramic panels up there, up above the windows, those had, most of those had to be recreated. They were, the, the, what was left of the originals was scanned and then recreated. And the, the floors, these rectangular areas on the floors, you've got the rose marble tile, but then you have these rectangular areas in here. That's where the benches were. So if you've ever been someplace like Chicago's Union Station, the Central Hall, the Great Hall there, you'll find that you know, for a waiting area of a typical train station, lots of benches. And this is where the, where the people sat as they were waiting for their trains. And they did a lot of preservation work on these tile floors. And these massive windows in the front here of the, the Great Hall. Um, originally, these rosettes and the framework around the windows were cast iron. Well, most of them, most of the originals were gone. They, were, they had been removed over the decades that this building was vacant. Uh, but they managed to recover some. Uh, they managed to recover samples of each of the, the various styles of the rosettes that were here. And they scanned them, did laser scan them. And then working with, uh, with Ford Manufacturing, they recreated 29 different patterns of rosettes around these windows, 3D printing them based on the scans of the originals that they were able to recover. And Originally, this building was not heated or, well, it didn't have cooling, didn't have air conditioning. And so in order to keep this, this room, uh, you know, at a reasonable temperature in the summertime, in the hot, hot weather months, there was actually a, a mechanism inside between the panes of the windows 
It could be used to open up these windows. Well, that mechanism <laughs> no longer works, but they, they cleaned it up and restored it. It's, it's still there for historical reasons, but the building is now air conditioned, so they don't need to open these windows anymore. So all these light fixtures in the Great Hall here were, of course, gone after three and a half decades of being vacant. They had all been removed. Uh, but they were, again, using the original plans the ori and archival photographs uh, of the place. They, they were able to recreate these. Uh, so they're in the same style as the originals. But, of course, you know, as a mo you know, making, modernizing the building, they, these are all LED lights now instead of the incandescent lights of the originals. But they're in the, they look just like the originals. And the tile, the, the tiles in the ceiling, in the art, the arch ceiling. Those tiles, there's 29,000 of these tiles in the ceiling of this great hall. And they, most of them actually remain. They, they survived and they were able to recover most of them. But they had to, after, you know, after they fixed it all up, they had to regrout it. There's about eight miles of grout around all of these tiles. And then at either end of the main grand hall, there's another waiting room as well. Over on this side is the women's waiting room. Uh, and then on the, the opposite side is the men's waiting room. So uh, for those that were traveling alone, uh, they could wait in, in those rooms if they weren't traveling with a whole family or group. Uh, so let's take a, go over here and take a look at the men's waiting room and continue on our little tour of the, the ground floor of Michigan Central Terminal magnificent old building. This building opened in 1913, closed in 1988, and then sat vacant until 2017 when Ford acquired it. And they have spent all in on this building, the neighboring uh, book depository building, uh, and some other stuff around here, the, the parks and everything, about $945 million. This is the men's waiting room. This was the men's waiting room area. These, these rooms will all be used as event spaces and public spaces. But the, uh, the capitals on top of these columns here were gone by 2017. Uh, but again, the, the researchers managed to find somebody who had an example of one of these ram's head capitals. And they, it was brought in, they scanned it, and they 3D printed new ones to replace the originals. Now, of course, there's all new wood here, walnut, and the, the wood floor, this beautiful wood floor, and the, the rose marble. And this is what this room looked like when they first moved in and started, uh, started work on it. All the rosettes in the ceiling, almost all the rosettes, were gone as well by 2017. But those are all back here now again the ones that they were able to recover the examples they were able to find they scanned those and they 3d printed new ones and put them in there the wonderful thing about this is the huge windows for lots of lots of daylight coming in which is fantastic when i first saw this building in the mid 1980s when I was, I, I grew up in Canada and I went to school in Flint, Michigan. I went to GMI, now Kettering University. And this is the, uh, the service hallway here. The dumb waiters were here in this wall. Uh, but I, I used to regularly come over the Ambassador Bridge uh, from Windsor to Detroit. And this building is, you know, quite visible. As you're coming over the bridge, this is really the first thing that you people would see of Detroit. And for decades, this building was like a almost like a bombed out hall. Uh, there were no windows. The 15 story tower up above, it's not open to us yet. We're just going through the ground floor right now. But um, you know, seeing this, this building decaying for decades was really sad. But you know, now seeing what what Ford has done 
to bring this building back to life, I think is really, it's a fantastic symbol of you know, Detroit, the city of Detroit starting to come back to life. And out here on the side, on the end of the building is what was the carriage house. So most people entered the, uh, the station through the uh, east entrance where we came in, uh, which is where the, the trolley station was. Uh, but over on this side was the carriage house where you know, maybe the more affluent or people who were arriving by carriage or later by car would come in and get dropped off here and come through the entrance on this side. This room here was the, the restaurant, the historic restaurant. And they're still working out exactly what they're going to do here. This may eventually become a restaurant again. Uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of work, you know, still, still work to be done here. And still you no know, floor tiles in here yet, but they've restored the walls and the ceiling. And it's pretty, pretty phenomenal what they've done here. And then coming through this doorway here, back into the, the ticketing area. So this was the ticket room. That's the ticket windows that we saw earlier are, this is coming in from the back side of that. So when passengers would come in, they would come up to these windows here and buy their train tickets. And then they would go over and wait in the grand hall or in one of the men's or women's waiting room. And then over here is the South Concourse, another remarkable space. And this is, they, they're considering this kind of the, the hub of the station and where a lot of people will come into. Again, this is going to be a public space. And um, because, you know, again, you know, this, it's such a large space. In the old days, this was not, you know, air conditioned, uh, but because of the, the volume of the space, the very high ceiling, uh, there was a lot of damage done in here because all the glass in the atrium here was gone for decades. So there was a lot of water damage here. Uh, and um, they, when they rebuilt the floor in here and stabilized everything, they actually installed a cooling system under the floor. So it's gonna, this room is gonna be cooled from below, which is kind of interesting. And so from this concourse here, passengers that were coming into the building and going to their train would come through this concourse and they would go through one of these entrances here and then walk down the ramp and go through the tunnel over here underneath the train tracks and come up on the platforms on the, the south side of the building, on the back side of the building uh, to catch their trains. And arriving passengers coming into Detroit for the first time would come through that tunnel and come up here, come into this concourse this amazing concourse, and it would be kind of their first, their first step into Detroit. They've done such a wonderful job of restoring this and preserving as much as they could of the original building where possible, recreating what couldn't be preserved, and at the same time also modernizing the building and bringing it up to code. You know, over the course of those decades of vacancy, uh, you know, scavengers had ripped out all the plumbing, all the wiring, a lot of the fixtures. And so, you know, all of that had to be redone, hence the, the cost. But throughout, you know, various places in the building, they've also preserved some of, some of the aspects of the period when it was vacant, including this hallway here, where you've got some of the graffiti some of the early graffiti. And upstairs in the tower, we, we haven't been up there yet, but up in the tower, there's also some elements of this, you know, connecting the, the, the origins of the building throughout and all the aspects, all the chapters throughout its history. So that is Michigan Central Station. And in a minute, we will step outside and get a look at the front of the building. This is the amazing front end front entrance of Michigan Central Station, which was vacant for so many years, so derelict, and the, the uh, limestone encased out here 
uh, that cases the building. Much of it was deteriorated and needed to be replaced. And it, the people working on the building tried to find matching limestone uh, and uh, had a hard time doing that. They found the original quarry where the original limestone came from, which had been closed for three more than 30 years. And they found the owner, convinced the owner to reopen the quarry for a time so that they could actually quarry new limestone to repair parts of the, this building with limestone from the original quarry uh, so that it would all match and it looks just looks fantastic. Uh, it's great to see this building coming back to life uh, starting June 6th for a period of 10 days, uh, June 6th, 2024 for 10 days. There's going to be an open house here, open to the public, so you can come and explore the ground floor of the building. And then, uh, throughout, and then after that, throughout the summer, there'll be an open house on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, until the end of summer. And then uh, over the next several months and, and year or more, uh, tenants will be moving into the into the tower up above, and some of the businesses moving in down below here. Uh, and this will be a, a hub for the uh, the Corktown area of Detroit. So you got parkland outside here as well. They've restored Roosevelt Park. There's going to be more parkland in the, in the on the other side of the building, on the south side of the building. And the, uh, the uh, management of the building is hoping to someday even restore train service and Amtrak uh, back to the building. So, that's nothing's confirmed yet. It'll probably be quite a few more years before that happened, but they've they've allocated space for that. So it could be it could be great. So that's our tour of Michigan Central. Hope you come down and check it out.